How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review of a bunch of people wedged into a table trying to drink beer, which is just the way it should be. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. We have today uh, Pizza Boy Brewing, Alice of Hand and Pizza Boy Brewing's Apple Crisp. Honey Crisp. Honey Crisp, which is made with apple crisp. Honey Crisp apples. There you go. See? Crispy apples. That's why they pay him the big bucks. Um... And, uh, yeah, I'm, this is my first actual um, Pizza Boy beer. I've never had anything from them before. Uh, I've heard good things, so I'm super excited to give it a whirl. Um, as far as what it says in the can, uh, it says the Crowler, because this is not some just weird packaging thing they have going on. They do the Cole Crowler thing, which is your can growlers, which I think is pretty freaking badass. Yep. Um, because the worst thing for me about growlers is I don't want too much. I always like to mix up my beers. And plus, we were debating back and forth about um, longevity Yeah, of the Crowler. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, it says, Crowler, Al's a hand, and pizza, beer, happy. Uh, honey, crisp, uh, Oscar Blues Brewery, they think, on here for the whole uh, Growler thing. Now, first off, um, any of you had this before? No. Not this one, no. no. Okay. Two, courtesy Joe. Joe went to uh, Al's of a hand, and um, was it yesterday? Yesterday. And how was it? I I really like it. I, I've stopped, I've been there a couple of times now. First couple of times I'm like, oh, let me try this because I've had like interesting shit that I've I've wanted to try on tap. But the last couple of times that I've been there, I've only had beers that they made, and yeah. I have not been disappointed once. Nice. And you've been there because you went with them, and you've yeah. been there because you were yes. there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks. Did you have anything that blew you away down there? Um. I have the actual barley wine, which I'm sure you're going to review, which is the other one he gave you. Okay. Uh, but I had it on Firkin. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought it was very good. You know, um, I'm not huge into the barley wines like yourself, but it's just one of those that I was kind of surprised by. It. You know, it was something good and, it, and kind of a good mix when you're down there and you see a lot of sour, sour, sour. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of a good mix. I started with the uh, pomegranate rose hip sour that they had. And I thought that was a nice, nice clean sour, not too much pucker. You know, it was kind of sessionable. And then, you know, switch it up, go with a barley wine. Nice. How about you? Anything really you um, blow you away from going down there? I mean, I tried what was the name of the stuff that we had yesterday? Oh, the uh, sunny side up. I tried that yesterday. Um, and I think the last time we went there, I tried. I don't know if I tried anything by them. I think the last time that the two of us were there, we didn't get anything from them. Um, I was there. Different things. Yeah, yeah, I was trying animal. different things that they had on tap. Well, 105 but, taps will, you know, yeah. kind of yeah. overwhelm you sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot to choose from. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole, but the whole, to touch on the whole Crowler thing, um, breweries now, I mean, if you've ever, you know, if you're in the beer, you usually get Crowlers, you get your glass or metal containers, you bring them there and they fill them. Well, now they have, like, this is in house, permanent in house. Mm hmm. Um, I know they have mobile ones that go from place to place. Yeah, those are like mobile cannings. So yeah. you would, they would go up to a brewery, can for them, and then can for them, mm -hmm. and be like, yeah. But this is more, later. this is more in house. This is you know yeah, thirty two ounces. Anytime they want it, they're filling this the exact same way that they would fill a growler, um, and then they have they take the can with the lid, and they go over to like a little sealer machine thing and it just kind of spins it around and like crimps it crimps the can down yeah i mean it's pretty neat it's tight as hell i can't really yeah you know, I mean, it, it feels it, like it feels like a just a, a legit can gigantic of, can yeah i was joking about before doing this i was like yeah i want to talk in like an australian accent just so i can just play off a of foster's thing but i can't pull that shit off for a long time so anyway um yeah i mean i dig the whole concept because it's not that it's small. I mean, there's a ton of beer in here, but um, it's a smaller amount. It's disposable. It's easy. I think this is kind of. I think this is how everything's going to eventually go. I don't, eventually, I don't know if they've if they factor the price of the can. No, it's into, they, they don't into the pop. thing because there's no like that was a nine dollar fill. So if you brought your growler, a thirty two ounce growler, it would be nine dollars. If you were buying a growler, like that was different. I think than buying a growler. 
from them. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand what you're talking about. Like, they don't charge you for the key in there, mm-hmm. but you don't know in the end if they're actually adding just a little bit more in the price. Yeah, no, like, people like if are the... Buy growlers. Or, or if growlers, it's built sorry. into, like, the fill cost. Yes. Like, whatever yeah. they say, the this is how much it is for a fill, if it's... If the can cost is factored into that. Yeah. You know? So the concept in general is pretty awesome. Um, hopefully the beer is awesome. Uh, label-wise, I do the whole label thing. I mean, it's your... It's... They're just putting something on there so you know what's going on. Yeah. But in general, it's uh, cool. But I'm telling you right now, I'm super excited to crack this open like I would any can of beer because I, don't, I expect it to explode in craziness, but I'll find out. We'll see. Hey, come on. Let's see this. No. No. There you go. How are we going to do this? Oh, yeah. I mean, a funnel would work. Get it. That's a weird glass to pour into. The taper on it's hard to like get a good pour on it. Someone's getting shorted. I assume there was more. In there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we'll do that. I'm good with that. No, you're not. Okay. You'll do that. Uh, just a little bit. for a little. There you go. Perfect. Right. Beautiful. So there we go. Let's do that. That there. This is so much better than those squared off the trap glasses. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's a weird thing to kind of base head off of it because I don't know how that would affect it being. Yeah, I'm not sure. A I mean, it, it or would, growlered. I mean, it looks like. It came out of a, a like glass. It, like it, it came out of a growler, you know? Like yeah. You, if you got to fill. Actually, I think, like, if you're not drinking a growler within. Yeah, you know, this is two weeks of seal, isn't it? Twelve hours. Almost twelve hours from when yeah. I was there. Yeah. Or yeah. actually not almost twelve hours, almost twenty four hours. I I was, okay, yeah. Because yeah. I was there yesterday. Yeah. But I mean it, it had a decent hand on it. Color wise, I mean it looks like a triple. It's 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 supposedly they're like I said, it's their honey crisp. It, they call it a farmhouse triple that is thirteen percent. I mean that in itself is kinda like a weird kind of like mm-hmm. it's like it tastes purple and adds up to green, and then looks like I think on whatever. the board, um, on the like beer on their beer list, I think it said twelve percent for this one. Okay, um, but I mean twelve to thirteen percent. Yeah, it's, it's like, neither a triple it's, nor it's is high, it a it's a, high a, end or farmhouse for, beer. Yeah, it's it's very high end on the spectrum for a triple. So to take that into account when you look at it, it has a nice kind of goldenish color with a slight kind of hazy density to it. But I mean. Yeah, it looks cool inviting. Moldy. No, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. A little moldy glass and kind of glow, almost glows. Yeah. You know? No, Joe, do you know, is this, like, why is it considered the farmhouse? Is it, is it a wild it farm? Like is it a wild fermentation? Uh, no, or? probably just the yeast strain that they're using the okay. considered farmhouse. No, I mean, it smells like Belgian. It smells really a, good. Yeah. It smells like bright, crisp, like almost like a, it smells like fruity, but in like a kind of like, yeah. like apple, like kind of like um. Pacific Islandy fruity kind of way with the Belgian yeast. It smells like a good beer. It smells like a triple. It does. it does smell like a triple, but that ABV is kind of weird. And talk about. It. I'm not really getting any. Uh, You're not a big triple fan. I know that. I'm too, not. So it's like I'm not getting really any of the um, any alcohol. No. In it. No. Not what at about all. you guys? No, I'm missing like the normal triple smell. You know, like like you said, you get a little bit of that alcohol. Like, on the nose, I said, but it still has that bready... It has a Belgian yeastiness yeah. to me. It smells like a triple. I mean, triple's a weird thing in general, because triples and Belgian Goldens are kind of, like, almost interchangeable to a point, but triples are triples, and Belgian Goldens are Belgian jo- Goldens. Like, all triples are Belgian Goldens, but not all Goldens are Belgian triples. Kind of like how quads and Belgian strong darks go. Like all are thumbs are fingers, and... but not all fingers are thumbs. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to drink it. It's even better. Cheers. 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 Yay! Well, I'll tell you what. That's pretty explosive in taste. That's pretty good. Yeah. And the fact that it's whatever, 12, 13%, it's kind of scary. It does not drink like that at all. <laughs> it's, no. drinking and like, that's the, it's drinking like a 6% beer. That's what a triple is supposed to do. It's whatever sugars they're putting into it. Yeah, but that's the thing what, is, that's going to dry it out. Triples 
don't get to 12 to 13 yeah. percent you know what i mean that's what i well, mean like it's just one of those things where it's just like kind of weird i, I understand in a traditional sense well you let's, know let's, you know this is this is drinking like seven, seven percent what it's drinking like seven percent yeah you know like something light a little while lighter for the craft community you know the one thing i'm getting or what i'm missing yeah like, this is a little high for a triple yeah because triples are usually anywhere between <laughs> seven to ten percent right Seven and a half to nine and a half. Ooh. Yeah, you're good. Um, but um, it, it has this... Um, it tastes like exactly like almost a triple, like a base triple, but it has this really almost like pepperiness, like a coriander pepperiness to it. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, I dig it. You Actually, know what I mean? it reminds me a lot of the uh, the Grasslands farmhouse sale that I had from them last night. And it reminds... It was really good. I've never had anything from them, but this reminds me of kind of like a tweaked, jacked up version of Alesmith's Horny Devil. That's what this reminds me of. Hmm. This is like this peppery coriander. And this, it's that spiciness to it, almost. But it still has that, like, Belgian triple base yeah. to it. What do you think, Amanda? Um, I like it. I think it's really good. Um, it's not as... I'm not getting a lot of funkiness. I mean, maybe a little bit, but... Um, I like the flavors. I think those are on point. I'm not getting too much, like, I thought, you know, them calling it honey crisp and, like, very prominent saying that it's made with honey crisp apples. I, yeah. I'm not getting an over, apple. I'm not getting, an, no. like, an overtly apple flavor. Yeah. And I, I, that's what I was going to say, like, what Amanda touched on. Like, I'm not getting that type of Belgian funk that I'm used to with a triple or a quad. Mm. You know, you get that, that aftertaste of, and you know right off the bat it's a Belgian and then what you're talking about, Joe, is, is just like, there's a little bit of sweetness on the front, but I'm not pinpointing it as being, it's apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I said, it, it is a, a well-rounded beer, where Matt's touching on points, it, it is peppery, it's, like, it has some good flavors to it, but, yeah, I don't, I'm not just picking up on apples. And, and this is, I think the apple's there, but I think that maybe you could know more than me, because you're more on the science end of it. I think the apple is there, but since it's such a high ABV, I think the alcohol sugars are combating the bitter, the apple tartness to kind of, yeah, kind of push but it's it also back. Like, there's a borderline between having actual apples in there and then tasting acetaldehyde, yeah, which tastes like green apple, yeah. So there's like that fine line of like, which one am I tasting? Yeah, it's you like it like without. Like a, like a pumpkin beer. Like, either you're going to use real pumpkin and not as good as so much pumpkin, or you're going to use pumpkin spice and get, like, what people think they taste as yeah. pumpkin. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, you're no, using, I'm, ta- we're using what like I'm real. What I'm talking about is, like, like just that compound that could come up through, like, fermentation of acid. Like, acetaldehyde can come up, like, through your uh, through your fermentation at, at certain points. Um, I'm not really getting an overtly green apple. On that spectrum, and I'm also not really getting a just apple. Well, honey crisp isn't green apple, is it? No, it's not. But like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I'm not getting. So it's yeah. not going in either of those directions. You, you, well, so you're not getting. You're not getting like the tainted apple yeah. flavor from the from the chemical. Yeah. And you're not getting the actual sugary apple when, when you bite into an apple. Yeah. Well, and that was what my what I was trying to say was is. Like, if you really want to get, like, a, a big, robust apple flavor, you're almost not going to rely strictly on using just apples. Well, yeah, because fresh apple, you probably use a little, a little bit of, like, an extract. That's something. what I'm saying, to, to kind of generate a taste yeah. that is apples. Uh, and that was my point between, like, if you just use pumpkin as opposed to actual pumpkin spices, to make a pumpkin ale, well, if you use just pumpkin and no spices, you might get some pumpkin out of it, more mouthfeel than anything, but you yeah. might get some pumpkin... But to really get that pumpkin pie flavor, you're going to use a spice. Yeah. Whereas with this, if you use, uh, you can use all the apples you want. But to really, if you want to get that nice apple flavor out of it, you, you kind of have to just use more than just a base apple. Yeah. You know? Because it said on the, did you look up like Beer Advocate or something, they said it was like 600 pounds of, of yeah, it was like, apples yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, which makes sense because you need to. But it's also 600 pounds of apples per what? 
Um, you know what I mean? Per probably, you know what I mean? per yeah, it could be per anything. <laughs> yeah, is it gonna be one, one barrel, a one, thousand? Yeah. Barrel? You know what I mean? Like not. Is he doing one tank barrels, with six hundred? You know, yeah, or is he yeah. doing all three of his tanks with six hundred? Yeah, yeah. It'd be like if I poop in my if I poop in my fish tank, that's a big deal. If I poop in the ocean, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, why did I talk about poop in a beer review? I don't know. Did you poop in your first game? <laughs> Listen, I, <laughs> that might be my that might have my household fetishes and what I do in my free time. No one's business but his own. And yeah, I, I brought it up, so I'm just going to shut my mouth. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, rating wise, I mean, honestly, I'm going to taste it one more time. I really like it. I'm going to give it. I'm gonna give it 89. Yeah, I'm probably right, right around there with you. I'd probably go like B plus A minus. Yeah. Um, someone who's kind of coming around to this style of beer, um, still not really something that I would gravitate towards. Um, but I really like it. I really like that it doesn't taste like you're drinking a twelve percent beer. It's it's yeah. not even it doesn't even t- it, that's the thing though. This is scary. Yeah. It's not even like it's like oh. It doesn't taste like a twelve percent beer. You're like, this is scary. Mm. Like it's scary, scary. You're like, oh, I'm gonna drink a bunch of these, and then yeah. you're like, why am I in a dumpster in why Arizona? Am I shitting in my yeah. fish tank? <laughs> <laughs> no, that that is a active, conscious decision for people who are in the sex thing. He just he just does not like this fish. Fish tank. The There's thing. no fish in that fish tank. Fish in there? <laughs> yeah, he that's just that's all it, that's all he does. It's the thing for him. Yeah. Gets them off. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Brad, what do you think about the... <laughs> about, the uh, about your fetish? I'm not too keen on that. But, uh, no, like I said, it, it's scary the level of alcohol to the drinkability of this beer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it once before. I forget what it's called. I think it's like Barefoot Barley Wine or something like that. Barefoot 2013. And it's one of those ones that clocks in at like 12 and does not drink like it at all. Yeah. And then you, you go through a 750 and you go to stand up and you're like, uh, crap. No, I, no, <laughs> I, I, have, I have a list of those beers. You know what yeah. I mean? I have like Sammy Claus, Beezlebub. There's a bunch oh, of yeah. them. That like, I call them Roofy in the Glass. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, it's, that's what this is. It's Roofy in the Glass. But, and that's a great thing. You know what I mean? It's, it's a negative, but in the end, but that, my dog would agree because yeah. he's trying to wedge in here because he didn't. He's just a douche. Like I said, I'm kind of in that boat with Joe, too. Like, I'm new to the Belgian game, um, like especially triples, quads. It hasn't been something I've been getting into. I, I've yeah. gravitated towards porters and stouts. You know, it's a solid beer. Yeah. I'm going to go that 85, 89. You know, if, sure. if you get a couple more 32 ounces of this, I'll be drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> For me, like, the Belgians that I go toward are quads, doubles. You know, that kind of stuff. It wasn't so much. Or, like... On the super lighter end, saisons, sours, you know yeah. that kind of stuff. It was just triples for me. Never really, Resonated really did it. Thing, you know? know, yeah, it's 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 a weird thing. And I kind of touched on this. I did a uh, review last night. I did a uh, a couple Belgian reviews, the Trappist reviews, and and actually, is literally one of the things I said is a lot of people um, they don't start out with Belgians. I think a lot of what people love. Is what they start out with. I mean, we all typically start out with like crap beer. I, and you know what I mean? I drink shit beer. And then we gravitate to our style that gets us into crap beer, and then we kind of lock on to one and then grow from there. And I don't think Belgians are like really one of those styles that, unless it's like a, I mean, almost everybody starts with a Belgian wheat beer, but that's yeah. kind of, you know, whatever. But your Belgian quads doubles, your trap scales, I don't think is a beer that most people really kick it off. That that's where I started. So it's like it's it's like it's like going home to get a, 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 a meal from your mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, might, it might not be the best meal you ever had, but it just works for you. So like a lot of times when I get this, like this is the first beer I had from Pizza Boy, and it's better than one I expected. Not that I had like this huge preconceived notion, mm-hmm. but I mean, if this is an indicator of what's come, I'm a fan. So yeah, a lot of people, like you said, like you know, you start off in more of you know, your maltier, darker yeah. stuff. You know Guinness, what I mean? Guinness was the first. And then you were you came in from the Irish like I came in like into beer with like M G D and like Guinness I like and having then when Guinness this Irish stout having section, Guinness like right? in Ireland yeah. and then like actual craft beer, like I went heavy into IPAs and then 
Amanda was more into stouts, so like I would split my beer halls and get stouts and like hoppier shit, yeah. and then it like slowly was like IPAs are just kind of <laughs> taking less and less room. Yeah, and it's like shit that I can age, and then like barley wines and stouts. Kinda. Yeah, see, me it was like Belgians and just English, like English old ales for like ten years. And then I started drinking everything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like where I cut my beer cloth on. So, but yeah, I mean, um, rating wise, uh, rating wise for me, like B plus A minus. Yeah. I think everybody but Amanda gave a rating. Yeah. So um, rating wise, you don't have to give one if you don't want. I'll give a rating. Um, <laughs> she does talk. I do. She does. Some... We'll let. We'll shut up for a while. I I'm gonna go maybe eighty five. Um. I do like Belgians. I I think for me, like when I try a Belgian beer, I kind of look for like some fruit flavors, like some sweetness, but it's not so sweet that it's not like drinking a red apple ale. Like you get some fruit flavors, but you also get, I guess, like the Belgian yeast to it too. So um, while apple isn't like the main thing going on here, like I don't really taste it overpowering everything else which I think is a good thing um I like it and I think it's really drinkable and like you guys said you could just keep drinking it and yeah as as, not even as all the glasses are, are pretty low already <laughs> and uh it's a 12 percent alcohol beer and this is what <laughs> review number five for the night yeah <laughs> yeah so it's uh, like you like it but it's not in line with what you typically like style wise yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I am more of a stout importer person, and I don't think I've had enough of this style to really, I don't know, give it... Alright, let's, let's go. Compared to, I know it's two different styles of uh, Belgians, compared to the uh, the Jovial that we had from the Trogues last night, how would, um, what do you This what do you is think? better than the Jovial. The Jovial I was disappointed with because, I mean, the guy brought out this cork and cage bottle and I'm just expecting like went through this whole like little song yeah. and dance and fucking poured it yeah. at the and table then it into, just like, a glass. flat like it was lacking in flavor I don't know yeah, yeah. But it's um, an infinitely better beer yeah, yeah honestly I would I, you I know, can't really think of a rating for Jovial right now but yeah, it will we'll, be lower we're not talking about yeah. that yeah. Um, how is it on par with the uh, the grass lines that I had um, so you tasted a little bit of that. Yeah, I don't think I like that one too much. I don't know. Yeah. Grasslands was just a, uh, just a I just had sale. a sip of that. And that was though, like, so I can't really. Like for me, that was like kind of on point of what I wanted to farm. Yeah. It was like funky as shit. Yeah. It was real nice. Yeah, you like the really sour, funky ones. But it was like saison wise, yeah. that's what I wanted. Yeah. Like taking a header and doing a fucking bale of hay with a little bit of Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you much. From what I from what I've had, which people like hear that and they're yeah. like, "What the what the, the fuck, fuck are you even talking, talking about?" That doesn't. And it's like, from what I've had on their sour ends, and like what my friends have had when we were there, hmm. you know, there's a whole lot of potential here. They're they're doing good quality beer already. Yeah. You know, and the, that potential's there to really take them to that next step. You know, if they put the time and effort, you know, tweak it a little bit here and there. Like I said, you, you really like the farmhouse ale. Mm -hmm. I said I thought the barley wine was a very good example of a barley wine. You know, the the, the sour was good. Yeah. You know, so I would like to see where they're going to like go. Like I said earlier, I have not been disappointed by anything that I've had from them. Yeah. I've had a couple of things. I've had, like, from a super crazy, I couldn't even tell you, style-wise, was like a barrel-aged something to, like, a half of Eisen. Haven't been disappointed with anything, and that was like my thing going into it. And again, you try not to have like a preconceived notion, but like um, the head brewer at Pizza Boy, like used to do. We used to work at a local uh, small little like uh, upstart brew pub. We're talking freaking twelve years ago, maybe in my area, and uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, a place called Black Rock. And while the beer flavor profile was nice, it was just a little bit off and it didn't treat you well the next day yeah um and so it was not i mean shit you know 12 years in in, a, in beer years as far as the brewer is like 
you know, yeah. with like dog ears, you know. Yeah, it's really. like so, it, 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 like not that I was like, ah, oh, I don't like it, but I was just like, you know, coming from that and not having it for a while and going into this, I was like, ah, oh, hopefully it, uh, hopefully it's good, and yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of this beer. Hopefully, uh, everything else I try. There you go. I think we're done. Uh, another yeah. review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or didn't, or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you'd like check us out anywhere else on the internet. Me, you can find Massive Beers, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Untapped. Joe? You can find myself and Amanda on our website, nepabreviews.squarespace.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at nepabreviews. And Instagram, uh, like I said, stalking these gentlemen at uh, the general 451. There you go. So th hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice um, triple right now. And uh, <laughs> hopefully you see you next time. Cheers. I don't have any beer now. <laughs>